Hey guys, today we are reading Third Grade Angels by Jerry Spinelli. Um, now we read this in the wrong order. Technically this book came before, so I imagine this is going to be the same main character as Fourth Grade Rats, um, Suds, and he is in third grade now. So let's start by taking a look at the cover of Third Grade Angels. So you can see in the front, um, this main character, I imagine, would be Suds, right? He's right in the front. Um, he looks like a younger version of Suds from Fourth Grade Rats. And just take a minute to see what you notice going on in the background and just in the whole cover. Based on the cover, what predictions do you have about this book or about what might happen in this book? I notice there's a girl whispering in the background. Another girl looks almost grossed out or surprised. I see a boy um, picking something up from the ground. I see one boy who looks like he's about to fall and has a basketball in front of him. And then in the back, it looks like there's a boy who's hiding or trying to um, hold something far enough from that other kid's reach so that he can't reach it. And then the last thing I notice is that the title's on a basketball hoop. And as I said before, there's a basketball in the background. So I wonder if maybe basketball is going to be significant in this book. All right, let's get to reading. Third grade angels to Lorna and Lou, May 16th, 1936. We have our table of contents. contents. Chapter one is called Finally. I heard, it in, I heard it first in kindergarten. First grade babies, second grade cats, third grade angels, fourth grade rats. I didn't like being a first grade baby. I wasn't a baby. I didn't like being a second grade cat. I like dogs. All this time, I've been waiting to be an angel, and now I am. Today was the first day of third grade. We could see it from the hallway as we headed for our new classroom. It was right on the door, a big sign, welcome angels. Our new teacher, Mrs. Sims, was standing there saying it to each of us as we entered the classroom. Welcome, Angel Brett. Welcome, Angel Heather. Welcome, Angel Emma. Amazing, how did she know our names already? She shook each student's hand. When it was my turn, she shook my hand and said, welcome, Angel George. Only my teachers call me George. My real name is Suds. When we were all in our seats, Mrs. Sims gave us the biggest smile I've ever seen. I knew right away that we were the best class she ever had. I fired my best smile back at her. She held out her arms. Good morning, angels. Good morning, we shouted back. A boy beside me added, teacher. We all laughed. So, we can see that our main character is who? Who's the narrator? It is Suds again. So it's the same main characters, fourth grade rats. And you see that it's also the same format. Um, the pronouns I see are my, only my teachers call me, me, George. Um, I knew right away. So it's first person. The narrator is in the book. Our narrator, his first name, I don't know if we knew his name was George before. Um, his name is George, but everyone calls him Suds. So we found out that it's the same narrator. We also knew this teacher, if you remember, um, in the last book we read, Fourth Grade Rats, he met his teacher again. He, he told us Miss Sims was his favorite teacher ever that he had in third grade, um, and he gave him a hug right before Gerald Lewis, Gerald Lewis, I believe that was his name, um, knocked over his lunch bag box and everything fell in the ground. So that was in our last book. So it seems like the teacher is really embracing that everyone's an angel, almost more so than um, in fourth grade. They didn't, didn't seem like the teachers talked about being a rat. But in third grade, this teacher is greeting all of them saying, good morning, Angel Brett. Good morning, Angel George. Are you the boss, Angel? <laughs> the same boy asked. They asked that to the teacher. Half of us were shocked and half laughed. Mrs. Sims laughed. She thought about it. She nodded. Yes, I guess you could say I'm the boss angel. But Joseph, 
She turned to the board and she wrote her name in big letters. You can call me Mrs. Sims. Joseph nodded and looked across the aisle at me. Joseph nodded and looked across the aisle at me. Cool. I didn't know him. I figured he must be new. All right, said Mrs. Sims. Let's talk about angels for a minute. You've been a baby and you've been a cat and you know what they are? But what about angels? What's an angel? Her eyes swept over the class. Hands went up. A spirit, said Raymond Ven Venati. A dead person with wings, said Holly Briscoe. Big white wings, Jeremy Munts called out without raising his hand. Judy Billings, who was sitting in front of me, it was no accident. I had rushed to get the seat behind her. Her hand shot in the air. Oh, oh, she went. Yes, Judy, said Mrs. Sims. Judy stood even though the others didn't. Perfect in every way. The way she said it, so sure, I got the impression she knew a couple of angels personally. So we see a couple of characters that we already knew here. We see Joseph, I imagine is Joey, right? And then obviously the famous Judy Billings. So we see that Suds already had a crush on Judy Billings in third grade. Um, and he ran and sat behind her to make sure that, you know, he could be close to her on the first day. And we got some interesting responses here. She said, what is an angel? Someone said a spirit. Um, oh, uh oh. Someone said a dead person with wings. Um, and Judy said perfect every way. So what do you think that the teacher is going to say an angel is? That's my question for you. Mrs. Sims pointed to her. Good. All good answers. She motioned the rest of the hands to go down. Now let's talk about Christina Serrano practically screamed. Mrs. Sims, your earrings are angels. She was right. Dangling from Mrs. Sims' ears were little silver angels with wings. A couple of kids clapped. A couple said, cool. Beside me, the new Joseph kid said, you to chick, but not loud enough for the teacher to hear. Mrs. Sims bowed. Thank you, thank you, friends. You were very observant. Last year's class didn't notice till the third day of school. She clapped her hands. All right now. Where were we? She pointed to Judy Billings. Again, yes, perfectionate. Per perfection. I've heard that too. Whatever angels may be, everybody seems to agree that they're perfect. All right, she looked us over. Show of hands, anyone here perfect? You think anyone's gonna raise their hand? We all turned to see if any hands went up. One did. Mrs. Sims seemed surprised. Well, Joseph, congratulations to you. Joseph grinned and slapped his own hand down. Nah, just kidding. Mrs. Sims pretended to wipe her brow. Phew, had me worried there for a second. I wouldn't know what to do with a perfect third grader. Send him to angel school, someone piped up. Everybody laughed. Mrs. Sims, hardest of all. It was only when she stared at me and gave me a thumbs up that I suddenly realized something. The one who said it was me. I couldn't believe it. I never did anything like that in my life. I never speak in class unless I raise my hand first. What got into me? I wondered if it had something to do with sitting next to Joseph. So you can see jo Joey or Joseph is already a bad influence on Suds. That's kind of funny. I can see I'm going to love this class, said Mrs. Sims. Okay, angels are perfect. Real angels, that is. But we're not really angels. Real, really real angels, are we? Sorry. But we're not really real angels, are we? We're third grade angels. People type angels, right? Right, came the calls. So what do you think she's getting at this? How do you think she's going to say that the third grade angels are or how they act or what they do? Because we know that people can't be perfect, right? It's impossible to just be perfect or perfect at everything. So what do you think her definition of being, you know, an angel third grader is going to be? All right, let's go to the next page. So she went on. The best we can do is, she waited to build up the suspense, the best we can do. In other words, said Mrs. Sims, in order to be good third grade angels, all you have to do is do your best. She looked over it. She looked us over. Got it? Got it, we said. Okay, said Mrs. Sims, but I know you guys. You like a little reward for your trouble, right? 
right? You want a little prize at the end of the road to make it all worthwhile, right? Right. Well, she said, she reached into her desk drawer. Have I got a prize for you? What do you think it's going to be? That's the end of chapter one. What do you think that Mrs. Sims prize is going to be for the third graders? Think about that before tomorrow. Thank you guys for coming. Have a great night.